I cleaned. Oops. Now, sometimes I have issues. Issues with pretty strong burn marks when cutting detailed vectors with my K40 laser. Of course, I cleaned the mirrors and the lens and checked on the alignment to make sure that this is not the problem. But since the K40 is by far not the strongest laser machine and 40 does not necessarily stand for 40 watts, but more for 15 to 30 watts, I often need to make multiple passes to cut through even this plywood, um, as you could see in my last video, which is pretty thin. So every pass leaves more and more unwanted burning edges, especially when uh, cutting more or less precise and uh, high detail graphics, as you can see here. Uh, the first initial pass often causes um, the wood to flame up a bit. Um, these burn marks can be removed pretty easily with some fine grit sandpaper. Um, also, therefore, I have the air assist that blows air through the laser nozzle um, to first of all avoid smoke from hitting the lens, uh, but also to help prevent that flame caused by the vaporization process. However, the second pass causes another problem. As the laser hits the already carbonized surface, what is way harder to penetrate, and uh, when the cutting lines are closely together, as you can see here, uh, where a whole piece is missing, the risk of burning the wood to ashes and create embers is quite high. Uh, I usually use a little water sprayer to prevent this from happening, but oh, of course moistening the wood is a pretty bad idea and creates additional, uh, an additional hurdle for the laser to um, penetrate through as moist wood is pretty hard to cut. So today I come around um, to try something out. Uh, what happens when I replace the air assist, uh, what in my case is a simple aquarium air pump, with an inert gas to disperse oxygen from the working area. Um, I prepared my channel logo ready to be cut out, so I will start this experiment with a standard cut on some uh, four millimeter plywood before I swap the air assist with some carbon dioxide gas. Okay, now um, I aligned the laser already. So um, I have my standard air assist. Um, the pump sits in the main body of the machine and the tube feeds through this chain to the head so the air comes out underneath here and uh, I will cut this out with the standard uh, air assist as I said um, I probably need three maybe four passes even to cut this out enti entirely and then we swap this over to some CO2 let's try this out Now my carbon dioxide tank is hooked up to the air assist hose by using a, a man cave style connection point which is just shoving this into this tube and using some electrical tape. Of course when this works I will invest in some proper industrial uh, connections here and fittings. Um, for now this works when I open the valve you hear hear the CO2 coming out to the nozzle. Here's a disclaimer guys, of course CO2 carbon dioxide is quite toxic for people. We can intoxicate ourselves with it and we just fall over um, and uh, probably die here next to this, um, next to the machine. This room is quite nicely ventilated. Also we have the, the fan of the machine um, that evacuates some of the CO2 but as the gas is um, uh, heavier than, than air it will sink down to the bottom of the machine, leak out and sink down to the bottom of the room. Uh, so, uh, just in case, I have uh, what I call a fart sniffer. So when I put the fart sniffer in here, you see that the beeps or the clicks will rise in intensity, which means that there is CO2 present in the machine. You can hear that. Now I take it out. It gets lower. So, I will place this, as I said, next to the machine, to the ground level. And uh, let's start our experiment. So I needed three passes to get through this. So I will do the same thing next to it. I will use three passes. And we will compare um, if we have more or less burn marks. As simple as that. Let's go.
Okay, first pass. Looks already a little bit better. Um, I could not see any flame whatsoever. So I will do the same thing again. Let's change perspective with our camera here. Pretty interesting first result. But I think, well, I should not stop here because maybe as my aquarium pump is tiny actually and it's not designed to feed a constant stream of air in a pretty high flow rate through this hose, uh, I thought maybe I should hook it up to something that has a little bit more power and I thought, why not using my um, airbrush compressor and um, let's try a third cut here using the airbrush compressor with more airflow and see if that does anything um, to our results. I finished my three results and uh, basically four, but this is the same than here. Um, while I'm doing that, I thought mm, it might be, well, it might be more fair to move it down here. That's the airbrush um, air assist one, uh, because uh, it is just closer to the laser tube. The K40 is not made as precise um, to have the same laser intensity over the whole bed. So uh, the laser weakens the f further you go away from the tube. So uh, I always say that for me, um, the edge of this uh, exhaust uh, fan uh, is about the edge where the laser has uh, the maximum of intensity. Um, so as here, I always say it's like two centimeters off from um, the actual uh, frame where the laser works best. So it was a bit, little bit out of that. So I thought it's more fair to put it underneath that one uh, because else I would need more passes. I am surprised what different results we have on the first look, at least to me, the one in the middle looks best. Well, that's obviously because with CO2 we don't have any flame or embers at all. But when we have a closer look under the microscope, compared with the third experiment by using the airbrush compressor, we see that the results are quite similar. When we look at my regular error assists, there is definitely a lack of airflow as the thin edges have burned. Still that we have less burn marks with the CO2 assist, these brown spots are pretty easy to sand off. Important is that the fine details are still there. And this is the case with both results, the CO2 and the high flow air compressor. Uh, it definitely shows that I need to use a bigger air pump in order to get better results. What is basically what everybody says. So is it worth it to use CO2 or another inert gas for getting better results? Well, probably not. Even the results shows a little less surface burn marks. The overall effort of having a CO2 tank installed next to your laser uh, and the general intoxication risk is not really worth it under normal conditions. Now, as I can see in the future, uh, even I lost a tire, uh, some of you now will ask, but why aren't you using oxygen and try to cut different materials like steel and metal and glass and... Well, let's say when this video gets a thousand likes, I will move all my gear outdoors and I will try oxygen. So hit that like and subscribe button and ring this little notification bell so you don't miss it. I hope you enjoyed these experiments. There's always more to discover on my channel, Man Cave Effects. Uh, I hope you enjoyed, and I see you in the next one. Until then, see ya.